Today, we are going to be talking all about how to navigate old environments when you are a new Christian. So stay tuned. What's up, everybody? I'm Ronnie. And Mel. And on this channel, we give you weekly tools and inspiration to help you find God and walk with Him in your daily life. So if that's something you need, consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. And today's question comes from Benny. Hey, Ronnie and Mel. It's Benny, all the way from Africa. I was born again uh, last year in November, and I got saved during the period when we were not going to school. And now we're going to go back to school, and I'm going to face a different environment from who I am now. So can you please help me how I should do things? How can I share my faith with my classmates? I really, really need your help. I just want to follow Jesus and remain faithful and loyal to God. Great questions, Banny. And first off, we just want to say welcome to God's family. We're so excited about you and your new relationship with Jesus, and we're excited to see where God takes you. So, Ronnie, let's actually start with you in this question because you had to navigate this a lot. But how do you navigate and handle going into your old life, mm -hmm. your old circumstances, as a new Christian and mm -hmm. as a, you know, it's, it's like a new creation. Yeah. How do you navigate that world? I would say first thing is just be confident, be confident in who you are today. Like you are a new creation. That's what the Bible says. Anyone who's in Christ is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So be confident in who you are today, what God has done in your life, what he is doing and go back into that environment, carrying that confidence, knowing like Paul said, uh, the, the old person has been crucified. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And as you go back into that old life and into that old world, it's not just you anymore. It's Christ in you living through you. So have confidence in that. And the second thing I want to mention is be unashamed. Paul says that over and over through the Gospels. I'm unashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, saving everyone who believes. And when I say be unashamed, not in a sense of this arrogance or pride, but just be unashamed of who God is now in your life, what he's doing, and be confident in that. So being unashamed uh, of what God's doing and uh, being bold in who Christ is and not backing down. And the last thing I want to mention as you go back into that, you know, you're, you're going back to school, as you're going back into school or workplace, or for anybody even, even listening, that this might be your uh, scenario where, uh, like Banny, have you gotten saved and now it's time to return. As you go back in, let your light shine. And that's what Christ said. Christ said, you are a city set on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. So let your light shine before men. They may see your good works and you would glorify your father in heaven. So go back into, but go back into your school, go back into your workplace and, and let the fruits of the spirit just be natural. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Let it just, like I said, be the new you and let those things just come out of you. And as you do that, as you love people, as you serve people, as you're kind to people, and as you have peace and patience, all this stuff says Christ is doing that in you and through you, that's gonna, people are gonna see the new you. They're gonna see the new you and, and they're gonna be like, huh, something's different. And that ultimately is gonna glorify God and give you an opportunity to share your faith as well. Right. And I would say that my points are a little bit more practical for you. And the first one would be is to really just find a few comrades to run with mm -hmm. people that are Christian, people that share the same values, because that's, I think, what's hard when you're going back into your old environment is you're around the people that you had like the old values with. And so it's so easy to get kind of caught back up in those old values, the values that the world values. But if you have some friends that are countercultural, that are clinging to Jesus, I mean, they don't have to be perfect, but that they're, they're running the same way that you are, grab hold of those friends so that you guys can sharpen each other, mm -hmm. challenge each other, hold each other accountable, and just strengthen each other in your new environment. And the second thing that I would say is to really just come up with a game plan because the Bible says that without vision, the people perish. And so when you're going into a new environment, just come up with some things that you want to put into your life to make sure that you're staying in the word, that you're staying in prayer, that you're staying, you know, strong in the Lord. 
like have a vision for what that looks like in this season of your life and what do you need to make sure that you kind of guard yourself against as you're coming into the new environment what are the things that used to you know maybe lead you into sin in your life okay how do we need to cut those things out and make sure that i don't go down that same path and get caught where i don't really want to be and so and sometimes that'll change too i know for me personally there was a season, especially in my beginning walk with the Lord, where he really wanted to protect me from a lot of those things from my old life. And now that I'm I'm delivered from them, I'm strong and I'm free, now I feel like I have more freedom in those areas because he knows that I'm strong and I'm not gonna stumble in anything. So what does that look like for you in this season? I would write it down, figure it out with what you want your life to look like, and then just give yourself grace as you go into a new environment. You know, it's, it's like a child. God's not looking at you expecting you to be a mature, perfect, you know, adult in the faith. Like you just got saved and you're navigating a completely new environment. So take baby steps and he's going to be with you there all along the way. And I think that that really is the last point is that God is with you and with whatever comes your way when you go back to school or for whoever it else it is, you know, when you go back into that environment, you know, it's not always going to be easy, but he's always going to be with you and you can cling to him. You can run to him when you mess up, when things are hard, mm -hmm. you know, just cling to Jesus through those times and he's going to get you through and just don't quit. And so for that question, those are kind of my answers. Did you have anything to follow up with? No, I, everything you shared is really almost this, this, my, the story of my testimony. Cause really just like you, I, I got saved, uh, in, in, the motocross industry, freestyle motocross industry, and then how to go back to it. So, and, and that industry is not necessarily a Christian environment. So and a lot of what you were sharing is really what I needed, you know, other believers to keep me accountable, to help build me up and to sharpen me. I needed to be in the word, in staying in prayer, like those things. I, I'm, those three things are so key in all the believers' lives, fellowship, prayer, in the word. And it's like, when you can just have those three things in your life, it's, it's almost, it's like, that's what strengthens us. And, and mm -hmm. I, I could just look back on my life. There, there were the things that really helped me as mm -hmm. I went back in and having them. Um, but to answer her last question was, you know, how, so as you go back, you're saying, look, I'm, I want to be faithful. I want to let uh, God use my life. And how do I how do I share my faith now that I'm back in that environment? And um, I would say just share your testimony. I think like think about this. You you have a story. God has done something in your life. Uh, you know, there was the old you and you were in that environment living the way you were living. And now there was a moment where God came into your life and it's done something. And now you've had these these months where God has been transforming you. And now there's the new you and you get to go back into that environment. And I think as I, I was saying, like, let your light shine. Just you just be in the new you and people seeing this change. That's going to provoke people to say, like, hey, something's different about her. Like, Benny, like I can see something different. Hey, what's going on? And then it gives you an opportunity to just share your story, uh, share your testimony. Paul did that always. You read in a lot of his letters. He shared his encounter with Jesus. Like, I was this guy, but then this happened, and now this is me. And then he would proclaim Jesus. And uh, I think I've had, on my journey and my experiences, going into a world that's, uh, you know, more secular, uh, more worldly, and, and being in that world for my work environment for over, you know, 20-some years in the majority uh, of, of my Christian walk, or all of my Christian walk <laughs> while I was uh, competing, um, I, I had better, like, uh, I was able to, uh, you know, create like a good safe ground or like gain ground with unbelievers when I just told my story. It's like, if I, sometimes when I would say, well, the Bible says this, the Bible says that, a lot of times their reaction to me was like, well, I don't believe the Bible. So they would kind of shut those down like immediately. But when I would just say like, well, I would tell them my story and say, well, God did this and God did that and God showed me this and I was living like this and this happened and God, and then it would always kind of like, their guard wasn't up to it. They couldn't attack my testimony. It was a, it was real and genuine. It really happened. So they, they were more open to listen. So I think, you know, maybe having that approach of just sharing what God has done and what he's doing in your life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think too, I mean, I think as Christians, the best thing that we can do is walk by the spirit. Because if you think about it, when sharing Jesus with others, I love what you said about, you know, just sharing your testimony because that's what it means to 
to be a witness. You're being a witness of what God has done in your life and who he is. And you're just putting it on display by sharing it with others through your words, Mm -hmm. but also by your actions Mm -hmm. and just the way that you love, the way that you're kind, the way that you're different from the rest of the world. That, I mean, that speaks volumes of who God is and what he's done in your life. And, but I think it's too, every single person that you'll encounter, they have a different way that God wants to reach them. Mm -hmm. And I think that I learned that going back into that same world that Ronnie was talking about. I was away from it for about, you know, Mm -hmm. eight or 10 years. And then I went back into it thinking, oh, I'm going to preach the gospel like this. But really the Lord showed me, no, some of these people actually just need to see that Christians don't judge them Mm -hmm. or that Christians are kind to them, even if they don't believe the same things. Mm -hmm. And so my idea of what preaching the gospel looked like to these people was actually different. And I know that it made an impact in these people's lives. And so just, just make sure you're being led by the Holy spirit because every single person needs, you know, a different way to be led to the Lord and Mm -hmm. God's working in those people's lives, whether you know it or not, whether you're sowing seeds or you're leading people to the Lord in them giving mm-hmm. their life to Christ, you know, just just continue to walk with him as you do this. And just for the rest of you, if you don't know, we actually have a new believers guide for those of you who just come to faith or if you lead people to the Lord and they just need to know the steps that they need to take next. And so if you want to download that, you can go to ronnieandmel.com slash new believer. I'll also put the link down in the description below, but it really does walk you through step by step the things that you know you can do as a new Christian and then it gives you tons of tools that will help you all along the way. So again, thank you so much for your question, Banny. And if you guys all thought that this video was helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And we want to hear from you guys. What were some of the things that maybe you did when you first got saved that were helpful for you when going back into your old environment? Let us know down below. We want to thank all of you guys supporting our page. We are a nonprofit and none of this would be possible without you guys. So if you'd like to join us and give to us, you can give at Ronnie and Mel slash giving, or you could support us at our Christian clothing line at markcollective.com. And if you have a question that you would like for us to answer here on our YouTube channel, you can go to ronnieandmel.com, click the little tab on the side that says, ask your question, and you can send us a voicemail. So as always, we hope this continues to help you on your journey to find God and walk with him. And we will see you next time.